By now, I'm pretty sure you've heard about the Insta360 Why Now. The modular action camera that can mutate from a GoPro competitor with a morphing screen to a 360 camera with bulging eyes. The 360 video side of this camera is what stole the show and got all of my attention in my 1R video. And without a doubt, it is very impressive. However, what slipped slightly under the radar is its regular wide angle lens mod and how good that actually is. Truth be told, I've been using it alongside my GoPro Hero 7 to get the motorcycle shots I need, simply because the footage coming out of them looks so similar. The stabilization is identical and the colors are so close that it's difficult to tell them apart. In fact, let's give it a go. Comment now which camera you think filmed shot A and which camera filmed shot B. Okay, so it's probably not that difficult side by side, especially with my coloring abilities. But the point is that this camera is right up there with the big dog. But what if I told you that it could be better? Remember that modularity concept of the Insta360? Well, that means that if a better lens came along, we could just snap it on. No, probably not that lens, but more like this lens. This is the one inch wide angle mod, but I'm sure you can read. Now that's a professional looking action camera. No wait. Okay, now that's a professional looking action camera. Insta360 sent me these goodies to showcase what the ultimate setup could look like. You know it means business by its beefy appearance, extra juice and serious lens. But this is just what it takes to get the best possible motorcycle video. The only problem is that all of this professionalism comes with a few downsides. Let me explain. The lens is made with the help of Leica, a company known for their quality lenses in the professional camera world. It's kind of like Yamaha teaming up with Olens to get better suspension. And despite its beautiful eye, you might be wondering how it differs from the standard wide angle lens. First of all, it usually just produces a better looking image. It's also got a slightly wider field of view at 14.4 mm over the standard's 16.4, which is always a sought after feature for POV shots on a motorcycle. Thanks to its bigger 1 inch sensor, it's considerably more competent in low light situations, which should suit night riders. And the best upgrade is its increased resolution. It shoots up to 5.3K, jumping up from the standard 4K, which makes quite a difference for motorcycle shots where you can never mount the camera exactly where you need it. And a crop in could make all the difference. Being able to crop in from here all the way to here without dipping below HD video is rather satisfying. Even a slight crop going from 5.3K to 4K can sometimes make the difference to crop at a mount that snuck into the frame for example. But it is considerably heavier. Not that different to the original requires you to remove this lens cover every time you want to insert or remove it from the cage, which is insanely annoying. And slow-mo isn't even as slow as the standard lens at only 120 frames per second instead of an over-the-top 200 frames per second. 
Then there's the boosted battery to top off the ultimate motorcycle camera setup. Because everyone knows the more battery life, the better. This battery is twice the size of the standard red one. And although battery life wasn't ever a problem for me, I know it's essential to a lot of bikers going on longer rides. I do appreciate it every time I forget to charge it before a ride and it saves me by still being half full. You might also have caught on that its new bigger is always better approach won't actually fit in its mounting cage. Luckily that isn't a problem with its magnetic retractable mounting pins. I thought they were going to be pretty incompetent and flimsy, but after a few weeks using them, I wish all action cameras would go this route and do away with irritating housings. Plus, I also think its entirely grey setup looks super stealthy and like it could put any other action camera in its place. But it also adds quite a lot of weight, especially when paired with the Leica lens that isn't super comfortable when mounted to a helmet. It obviously doesn't matter with any mount that isn't stuck to your face, but it also increases the height a tad, causing it to creep into my line of sight, which could be construed as dangerous. And it appears that it isn't waterproof with this battery on. And I kind of wish I'd learned that before doing my research for this video, because I've been riding with it in the rain a few times now. I do hope you enjoy this video because this is what my poor bike had to go through just to make it. But I have to say, I've never had a problem and the two batteries don't appear to be any different, making me think it's just the cage that makes the difference. The one area this setup does excel in is off the bike shots which is an area action cameras are usually pretty useless in. With its bigger sensor and dynamic range, it's far more competent to use to capture your bike, environment or ride by shots and without feeling like you're wasting valuable battery life. But coming back to my earlier statement about the standard Insta360 ONE R. But what if I told you that it could be better? The most sensible response to that would be this question. But does it actually need to be any better? Now, Insta360 might never send me camera gear ever again for saying this, but the original setup with the 360 module and wide angle module is perfect as it is. It's great value, gets incredible footage and is all most people will ever need. The battery is a great upgrade if you're looking for less charging in your life. But the Leica lens itself is tough to justify to bikers. If you can afford it, then buy it. If you're a camera crazed lunatic, then buy it. Because it really is a great lens that you won't regret and has become my new go-to. But you wouldn't buy Olin's suspension before you could ride a motorcycle and the same concept applies here. Don't buy this lens until you know enough about cameras to warrant it. Instead, buy the standard bundle and chances are you'll be content. But anyway, check out the links in the description if you want more information on any of these setups and let me know if you think this really is the ultimate motorcycle camera setup or if the standard bundle would suit you just fine. And I'll see you on the next ride.